No vote. No vote. He looks good. He's Good evening. The April 23rd, 2018 agenda meeting of the Milltown Borough Council will now come to order. Will the clerk please call roll? Council President Dixon? Present. <coughs> Councilman Farkas? Here. Councilwoman Kerber? Present. <coughs> Councilman Ligotti? Here. Councilwoman Mayor? Here. Councilman Revolinsky? Here. Mr. Mayor, we have six present. Thank you. We will dispense with the moment of silence and salute to the flag till the regular meeting this evening. Go right into items for discussion. First on the agenda tonight, presentation from the Milltown Public Library. Good evening. My name is Bonnie Sterling. I'm the director of the Milltown Public Library. I've been the director for about 15 years or so. <laughs> anyway, the reason we wanted to come tonight, and I'm here with some members of the Board of Trustees, we just wanted to, I have a packet for each of you with our annual report and some other pieces of information to update you on what's going on with the library. Um, I just want to say that the library has changed over 15 years. We're no longer just books. We have books and DVDs and CDs, but we also have digital resources such as ebooks and audiobooks on um, digital audiobooks. We even have access through your Milltown Public Library card <coughs> to TV shows and movies. Okay, the other thing is we consider ourselves a very important part of the community. Um, we have our own programming, we have story times four times a week. Every Wednesday after school, we have a craft program for children of all ages. We have community groups who use the, our meeting room, which is in use just about every day. We sponsor a knitting club, a bridge club, a mahjong club, an art club, a book club. That's one of the ways we get adults in the library. And if anybody knows anyone who's interested, they always welcome new members. We also host lots of community organizations. We have Girl Scout troops and Boy Scout troops. We have a 4-H club. We have the J&J &J retirees. We have the Bristol Myers Squibb retirees. Um, and we let tutors come and use the facilities to tutor the students after school. We have a notary. We have a copy machine and a fax machine. We have computers. We've helped people apply for a job. We've helped people fill out an unemployment report. We've helped people dash in and print out their boarding pass for their vacation. So we do a lot of things and whenever we see a need in the community to do something else, we try to get on board with it, okay? We want to thank all of you for your support. We really depend on the borough and working together with the borough to keep the library up to date and to keep adding activities and programs that people ask for. We're always open to suggestions. You're all welcome to come to one of our board meetings. Okay, I'd like to give you all a little packet. This has our Thank you. You want to give it to us and then we'll take yeah, ours we and go? Okay. Yeah, we can pass okay. it around. Okay. Well, I think this is the wrong end of it. This is for you. I'm sorry. Thanks. No. That's fine. No rush. Thank you. You all have a new library. Great. And you don't even have to come to the library to use it because Thank you. Thank you. But if you're not sure, you can call us up. We like to see people Thank in you. the library, but we have a lot of people Thank we never see, but they use our, well, most of our digital resources you can just access online. 
Okay, the other few more things I want to mention, we're part of a consortium of 31 libraries. So although Milltown is a relatively small library when you think of other libraries in the area, once you have your library card, it's good at any of the other 30 libraries. You can either go there or you can have material sent to the, to Milltown Public Library. So keep that in mind. And the final thing is, in addition to all the other resources, we also have museum, a museum pass. The Friends of the Library purchased a pass to Grounds for Sculpture. And you can borrow it with your library card and take up to four people and go there for free. Okay, um, they're in the process of getting a second museum pass, maybe to the Intrepid, I'm not sure. Okay, so that's our museum pass starting probably in May is in use all the time. You can call ahead and book it and then <coughs> use it. And it's very nice. Um, just I'll put in a good word for the friends of the library. Um, they have a book sale coming up in May and with the funds they receive from the book sale, they're able to do that. They also pay for our summer, couple summer reading programs. Okay, any questions? Do, do I, I, can't, I don't ask you questions. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know what, Bonnie, I did, I had some notes because I'm the liaison to the library and I got to stop in at the, the meeting the last time and it's not usually, uh, I don't get there that often in the evening and there was, it was a hub of activity which was really nice to see. There were kids in there, there were women playing games, there were families in there, so it was really refreshing to see how much was going on at 6.30 on a weeknight evening. But I just wanted to bring up too what you had mentioned, how you had the consultant who came in to help with the design, so if you should, I would encourage folks to stop by because the the, the new design is going on and also the LED light fixtures that you did oh, in yeah, conjunction with the public work. Yeah. yeah. We upgraded to save lots of money on electricity. Yeah. I want to say the library is thriving. Maybe six or seven years ago when the whole digital thing came out, people said the library is gone. But I didn't think that would happen. There are there's still people who actually like to read books. <laughs> we, we appreciate Thank it. You, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, next on the agenda, discussion regarding marijuana sales and legalization. That would be me. I'm the marijuana specialist on the... Uh, <laughs> 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 um, so we had, we had been speaking about this since the very beginning of the year, and I have now gotten the input from all of the stakeholders, the last being... Um, a listening tour that was done by Assemblyman Joe Danielson. So two Saturdays ago they had at Middlesex County College um, input from both pro and con because he it, it is his task to find out statewide um, what people's feelings are about the, the recreational legalization. What I found interesting about that was the people that were pro um, you know, the sale of marijuana, the majority of them were still in the, you know, using it for medical reasons. So I had heard that they were going to expand the medical reasoning for it, but, you know, a lot of people got up and said that they had pain or things like that and they really relied on it. However, that wasn't to the spirit of the, you know, um, recreational use. So, um, you know, I, as I've said at many meetings, I've spoken to the fire chief, the school board, the seniors had a strongly worded letter. So, you know, obviously um, Milltown uh, feels that they do not want to um, allow the sale or you know, have a dispensary for recreational use in Milltown. So Mr. Bruder and I spoke today and there are two options and he suggested that I just get a consensus from the council. What uh, there, the two options are, the first one is to uh, do a resolution which would um, show that, uh, send the message to the state <coughs> that the borough of Milltown is against the legalization of marijuana, which uh, for recreational use. Uh, Spotswood, we have an example, Spotswood did that. The other option is to pass an ordinance that would um, somehow ban the sale of marijuana within the borough. And we could do 
the first one and the second one both or one or the other so it's up to the um, the council as to you know Mr. Bruder and I, yeah, I guess you could speak to it a little more you know get consensus on which way we want to go and then he will craft those so that we can vote on it at the the next meeting yeah, that, that, that's correct. You've, you've, you've stated really everything I would say. It's, okay. a, it's a consensus, it's a policy decision of the council. Uh, if you elect, you can, you can authorize the preparation of a resolution and then it, you would consider that resolution. That would be sent to the state legislators, simply advising them that the governing body of Milltown is of the view that, that uh, in considering this subject that the state legislature should not pass the legislation approving the recreational use of marijuana and then and and therefore the the um, dis dispersal or dispensal I should say of recreational marijuana uh, if you also so that's one thing to consider the second thing to consider they're not certainly not mutually exclusive as <coughs> councilwoman mayor has said is you can pass both you can elect which if you want to pass one or the other uh, that because they're not at all inconsistent the second would be passing an ordinance or considering an ordinance that would ban the sales of marijuana within the borough of Milltown. And that, again, that would be done by ordinance, whereas the first would be by resolution. And you can do, you can take both actions. It's, it's really a it's policy decision of the governing body as to how you wish to proceed. Could a third, <coughs> a possible third part be added to that if it was the, the feeling of the council to uh, prohibit the smoking of anything on public grounds and properties in the borough? You could do that, but in past, well, you certainly can do that. And something else that Councilwoman Mayor and I had discussed was that the governing body also can consider an amendment to the master plan banning smoking or banning smoking of marijuana at, you know, at your election in certain zones within the municipality around schools, around churches, uh, residential, things of that nature. So that's another, another way of implementing it. In fact, if you do contemplate an ordinance to preclude the smoking of marijuana, I would, I would say that probably a stronger way to go about it would be to um, do it by way of a, an ordinance, a land use ordinance, um, banning it in various zones rather than just, uh, well, I shouldn't say rather than, you can contemplate both, but that would be my suggestion. Yes, you can certainly pass an ordinance banning um, smoking of marijuana or smoking of anything on public property, but you can't ban the smoking of cigarettes, let's say, uh, on private property. So therefore, if you don't, if you, if you pass that sort of an ordinance, you wouldn't be, as far as marijuana, you wouldn't be banning the sale of marijuana or you wouldn't be banning its use elsewhere, so to speak. Again, and I want to keep that it, one issue separate. The state is considering whether to enact the uh, legislation to allow um, smoking of marijuana. If they pass legislation to that effect, then, then Milltown is not going to be able to stop people from using marijuana. Really, the ordinance that uh, Councilwoman Mayor and I were discussing was an ordinance which would ban the sales of marijuana within the borough. Wouldn't you be able to prohibit it, and possibly this is through the land use laws, like you were discussing with the master plan? Um, I would hate to see someone sitting outside Dunkin' Donuts having their morning cup of joe and their morning joint while everyone's walking past. So um, that's regulating businesses would, be, would have to be done through a, a land use that's rather you, than a... something you can do, absolutely. Okay. Yes. I just have to make a statement. Is, Retired law enforcement officer, 38 years on the job, 30 of them has been investigating narcotics. 18 of those 30 years, I work with the federal government and the Drug Enforcement Administration. I've worked on five <coughs> of the seven continents investigating drugs. I've seen marijuana use all over the world, and I am against any legalization of it, any form, any shape. I'm sorry, but that's my opinion. I'm state certified. State, federal, county, and municipal certified instructor and certified expert in the court, in field of narcotics. And I, from everything I've seen, it's <coughs> counterproductive if you're going to have a war on opiates and you're legalizing marijuana. And I've always been taught if we know, if we knew then what we know now about alcohol, it never would have been legalized. 
Alcohol, alcoholism today is one of our major problems, taking money out of all our coffers, trying to just get everything fixed. And in my opinion, you do this with marijuana, the same thing is going to happen. That's my statement. I had to say it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. So then do you think that you want to do the resolution to send a, a message to the state first, like Spotswood did, and then do the ordinance? I would That love would to. be my recommendation. If not, I'll do it myself. <laughs> So do we want, Mayor, can you ask if, every, if everybody? Yes, it would be the consensus of the council to put together the resolution for consideration uh, and also uh, ordinance. Well, I actually have a, a few more questions. Okay. Uh, if we were to pass a law stating that you couldn't buy it or it wouldn't be available for sale, this would strictly be recreational. So someone with a legitimate, you know, um, medical need. Medical need. I know a lot of times children with autism, it's been proven that uh, the THC or the T, whatever, um, TCBs or whatever they're called, um, helps uh, quell some of the seizures. It's already, um, yeah, so it's already I, legal. That's already that. legal. So this that's, does not touch that at all. Okay. So, but I mean, if that could be sold at Milltown Pharmacy or Walgreens, would us being able to enact... Uh, something banning the sale impact that as well, well or could you still just go to Walgreens or you well, know you have to have a town pharmacy and pick it up you have to have a specific medical script and they sell it at specific locations that are identified by the state right now there's a dispens they have dispensed medical dispensaries so the med there's a medical dispensary in Woodbridge and I believe that Cranberry has is going to get one as well I think there's four, yes Cranberry four or five places in the state that are approved. they they had said at one of the meetings that I went to that it's been legal for medical for a few years, but Woodbridge actually, their dispensary is losing money because they, they narrowed the scope of the medical reasons so much. So I heard recently that they've expanded that, so that, you know, for, for different, more medical conditions. But so to, to answer your question, I don't, it's certainly not in the works yet that you could go into Milltown Pharmacy but you could go into the medical dispensary to buy it. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so what is the consensus of the council to uh, have Mr. Bruder pursue those two uh, avenues? Yes. 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 So what I will indicate is that for the next council meeting, I'll have a resolution prepared. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, forward it to the administrator and clerk um, and, and they'll to place that on the agenda, the resolution that would go down to trend. And I'll also begin working on an ordinance. And as I say, I will consult with you, but I think what I will probably recommend is that first we um, amend the master plan. And then once the master plan is amended by way of an ordinance, so we would introduce an ordinance, a standard, standard procedure that you've <coughs> followed numerous times in the past, introduce the ordinance, forward it on to the uh, planning board, land use board, for their consideration and comments. They have 35 days to get it back to you, and then you act. Then you consider their comments, and then you have a uh, uh, public hearing and final adoption on that ordinance at that time. Once we do that, then we could put into play the specific ordinance dealing directly with uh, sales of marijuana based upon the amended master plan, and follow the same process. Sounds good. Any and questions for yes. the attorney? If I can make one suggestion. Yes, please. Mr. Bruder, could we do it not the next meeting, but the one right after that? The next meeting is youth and government. I don't think it's a good idea they vote on it. Well, they may not vote. But they may <laughs> no, no, <they're laughs> And I, I was going to say there's no thing. big rush because as they indicated, you know, even though um, you know, Governor Murphy ran on getting it done right away, there's, there's several bills that have been introduced into the assembly about this. So they said that this isn't going to happen. The, the, full legalization, if it happens, will not happen anytime soon. So right. we have time to get this taken okay. care of. Okay. We got it. Anything else? <clears throat> okay. Seeing none. Request to change the second May meeting from May 29th to Monday, May 21, 2018, 7 p.m. That was the clerk put that on? I did. I asked for the council to consider changing the second meeting in May. Uh, we did put out an advertisement for the RFPs for our professional services um, for 50 Washington Avenue. The opening date of those is May 15th. Um, on top of that, we are also, with the budget and the budget amendment, we, we don't suggest doing a public hearing at our youth and government meeting. Um, and I would like to 
moved the May meeting so that it continues to be on a Monday, which is in line with our normal schedule, but also does not delay us any further in the adoption of the budget. Um, and that way we can handle those matters, um, specifically the RF, uh, hopefully awarding the contracts of RFPs um, for those professional services, as well as um, public hearing and adoptions of our budget. Um, I had spoken briefly to several council members regarding this. I just wanted to um, request that we change it and then I would advertise accordingly if there's a consensus. Is that, the, uh, is that okay by the council? Yeah. yeah. No yes. Problem, why, don't, why don't we want to expose the kids to our budget hearing? No, no, no the 21st. Oh, it's complicated because they vote and we got to talk to them. And, no, we just move it back. Well, I mean, they, they get to hear what residents have to say and understand both sides of the story. It's more just because it's difficult to, for them to respond since they're at the mic. And so it becomes a game of telephone, te technically. <coughs> so you're like telling the child what to say and then they're trying to repeat it to anybody who has a question or comment. And then it goes back and forth. That, so it's just, not that they can't be exposed to it, it's just, it's not always in the best interest. Fair Again, enough. It, that's, it, uh, that's it's my a bit suggestion, of a nightmare. I'm not saying. Hmm? Yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare. The, the, <laughs> it's just the, a hard logistic. I, I don't want to shelter handle. the kids. You know, they should see what what the real world's all about. <laughs> They've gotten some good ones before. They, they can watch it. They can watch it on the telly. <clears throat> right, Ross. So, is, is there a consensus on council to change the meeting? Going to have a vote on that, okay. or just, it's just a consensus of the council of the shaking yes or no of the head. And then, just to make a notation for anything that we require. Um, Budget-wise, for to move forward, it's the motions to the 21st meeting on the 21st, gotcha. not the 14th. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay, I think that's the consensus of the council. Okay, next on the agenda, miscellaneous engineering items. It's Mr. Mayor, two items tonight. Um, the Wilson Avenue project. We just want to report that we submitted the request for an extension of time to the DOT. We will need to follow that up with the resolution of the council that I think is on the agenda for tonight's meeting. And with regard to the public works project across the street, the pre-construction meeting was held on April 12th. Uh, the contractor has now submitted his bonds and insurance certificates and we are prepared to forward those to the borough. And we are scheduling a utility coordination meeting for this week um, and the contractor is preparing to mobilize to the site. Excellent. Any questions for the engineer? <clears throat> Can I get a copy of the uh, minutes from the pre-construction meeting? Absolutely. Thank you. Anything else, Lou? That's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for the engineer? Seeing none, I will close uh, items for discussion. Audience comments, please limit your questions to things discussed at the agenda meeting. With that, I will open <coughs> audience comments. Seeing none, I will close audience comments and I will accept a motion for adjournment. So be it. Second. second. I have a motion by Council President Dixon, seconded by Councilman Revolinsky, uh, that we adjourn. Will the clerk please call roll? Council President Dixon? Aye. Councilman Farkas? Aye. Councilwoman Kerber? Aye. Councilman Ligotti? Aye. Councilwoman Mayor? Aye. Councilman Revolinsky? Aye. Mr. Mayor, we have six ayes. So move. We'll adjourn for about five minutes.
Good evening. The April 23rd, 2018 meeting of the Milltown Borough Council will now come to order. Will the clerk please call roll? Council President Dixon? Present. Councilman Farkas? Here. Councilman Kerber? Present. Councilman Ligotti? Here. Councilman Mayor? Here. Councilman Revolinsky? Here. Mr. Mayor, we have six present. Thank you. Will the clerk please read the meeting statement? Let the minutes reflect that adequate notice of the holding of this regular business meeting of the Borough Council was provided by the adoption of a resolution and the posting, filing, forwarding of a copy of the same to the official Borough newspapers, Home News Tribune, and Star Ledger Publishing Companies on February 20th, 2018. Public participation in this meeting will be permitted during public hearings and after the agenda of, the agenda of scheduled matters has been completed. Thank you. Will you please rise for a moment of silence, followed by a salute to our nation's flag. Next on the agenda is public hearings, and tonight we have two scheduled for ordinances numbers 18-1460 and 18-1461. We also have a resolution on which we will get to later. The ordinances have been published according to law. Copies have been made available to the public prior to this evening's meetings. I would ask anyone wishing to speak in favor or against the ordinances. When recognized, please clearly state your name and address on the microphone in the center of the room. For the record, will the clerk please read ordinance number 18-1460 by title. An ordinance fixing the salary and wages for various positions of the borough of Milltown and providing for the manner of payment thereof for the year 2018. Okay, at this time I will open the public hearing for the ordinance. Does anyone have anything they wish to say? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing for the ordinance and ask the council for their consideration. Would any member of the council wish to move for the adoption of this May second final reading and published yeah. according to law? I make a motion. Yeah, I move that this <laughs> ordinance be adopted. On second second final and final reading, reading published and published law. according to law. Yeah. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Council President Dixon, seconded by Councilman Ligotti, that the ordinance be adopted on second and final reading and published according to law. Is there any discussion? Will, <coughs> will the clerk please call roll? Council President Dixon? Aye. Councilman Farkas? Aye. Councilman Kerber? Aye. Councilman Ligotti? Aye. Councilman Mayor? Aye. Councilman Revolinsky? Aye. Mr. Mayor, we have six ayes. So moved. Will the clerk please read ordinance number 18-1461 by title only, please? An ordinance of the Borough of Milltown County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 11 of the Borough Code of the Borough of Milltown, entitled Establishment of the Police Department, to supplement with Chapter 11, Section 24, Operation Blue Angel. Thank you. I will now open the public hearing for the ordinance. Does anyone have anything they wish to say for or against? Seeing none, I will close the public or, uh, portion of this and ask the council for their, for their consideration. <clears throat> I make a motion that this ordinance be adopted on second and final reading and published according to law. I second. second. I have a motion by Councilman Ligotti, seconded by Councilwoman Kerber, that the ordinance be adopted on second and final reading and published according to law. Is there any discussion? Will the clerk please call roll? Council President Dixon? Aye. Councilman Farkas? Aye. Councilwoman Kerber? Aye. Councilman Ligotti? Aye. Councilwoman Mayor? Aye. Councilman Revolinsky? Aye. Mr. Mayor, we have six ayes. So moved. Okay, just for the, uh, the council's information, uh, the following resolution will be treated uh, like an ordinance. So the proper res response, I believe, will be ordinance be adopted on second and final reading and published according to law? Or is this no. a... We're going to... To have open the public hearing and table it till the 21st. Okay, very good. 
At this time, will the clerk please read resolution 18-118 <coughs> by title only. Adoption of the municipal budget. Okay, as the clerk has stated, we are going to have a public hearing and it will be closed with no vote, correct? Yes. Okay, at this time, I will open the public hearing for this resolution. Is there any, anything anyone wishes is to say for or against? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Phil Zambrano, 40 Van Lu Avenue. Uh, just a quick summary of why are we tabling this to May 21st? There's an amendment that's going to be uh, voted on after this hearing. Okay. And the law requires that we, well, we can only amend the budget after the initial public hearing. Okay. So the, the public, the, the amendment is an amendment which requires a public hearing, which also requires an advertisement. Okay. So it's just a procedural thing to set the, the, the plan in motion for the in May 21st meeting. I was under the impression this is pretty much a done deal for the budget for this year, so that's why I'm asking. Well, subject, subsequent to the original introduction, there was a finance committee uh, meeting where they had um, proposed certain additional cuts to the budget. Okay. Those are being addressed in the amendment that's <coughs> later on in the agenda tonight. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Seeing none, I will close the audience comment portion and accept a motion for tabling. Make a motion to table resolution 18-118. A second. Okay, we have a motion to table by Councilman Ligotti, seconded by Councilwoman Kerber. Uh, do we uh, call roll? Yes. Will the clerk please call roll? Council President Dixon. Aye. <laughs> Councilman Farkas. Aye. Councilman Kerber? Aye. Councilman Ligotti? Aye. Councilman Mayor? Aye. Councilman Revolinsky? Aye. Sir Mayor, we have six eyes to table. So moved. Okay, next on the agenda, comments from audience on resolutions or bills and claims. Uh, listed on the agenda, okay, you see them there. If you have any comments or questions, please use the microphone in the center of the room. Give your name and address for the record when recognized. Remember, comments and questions are limited to the resolutions and things <coughs> listed on this evening's agenda. With that, I will open the audience comment. Seeing none, close that section. Introduction of resolutions and reports of standing committees. Uh, next we have the uh, reports, oh I'm sorry, we have the introduction of resolutions. A consent resolution has been prepared to cover the 12 resolutions listed on this evening's agenda. <coughs> if any member of the council would like any of those resolutions acted upon individually, please give me the number of the resolution and it will be removed from the consent resolution. Yes, Mr. Mayor, 18-130 please. Any others? A uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, 18-129. Uh, any others? Okay. Will the clerk please read the consent uh, consent resolution? And as a reminder to the council, you will be voting for all resolutions except things numbers 18-129 and 18-130. With that, will the clerk please read the consent resolution? Whereas pursuant to the rules of council, the council may establish a consent agenda for any regular or special meeting, and whereas the borough clerk has posted a consent agenda for this meeting. Now therefore be it resolved by the mayor and borough council of the borough of Milltown County of Middlesex, state of New Jersey, that the consent agenda previously prepared by the borough clerk be approved without the necessity of having the individual resolutions read by the borough clerk. Okay, you've heard the reading of this resolution. What is your pleasure? Move that this resolution be adopted. Second. Second. I have a motion by... Councilman Revolinsky, seconded by Councilman Ligotti, that the uh, resolution is adopted. Will the clerk please call roll? Council President Dixon? Aye. Councilman Farkas? Aye. Councilman Kerber? Aye. Councilman Ligotti? Aye. Councilman Mayor? Aye. Councilman Revolinsky? Aye. Mr. Mayor, we have six ayes. So moved. Okay, we're going to act on resolution 18 129. Will the clerk please read that resolution by title only? Authorizing certain personnel actions, finance, and administration. Okay, you've heard the reading of this resolution. What is your pleasure? I move that this resolution be adopted. Second. 
I have a motion by Councilman Revolinski, seconded by Council President Dixon, that the resolution is adopted. Is there any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I had a question about that. That's why I had it pulled. Um, have we posted for both positions? Yes, both are posted. Both are posted. They're posted on the uh, New Jersey League of Municipalities. Um, the CFO position, um, I believe we received four uh, applications, or uh, five, I'm sorry, five okay. uh, resumes applications. Um, and I believe for the administrator, there has been one that has been submitted. Okay. So, and my concern, my only concern was um, for the business administrator part, mm -hmm. you know, I was, I, you know, I know you were nice and gave us plenty of notice. I was hopeful that maybe someone would, have, someone would have come in so that you could have, you know, gotten them up to speed before you had to go to your, mm -hmm. your next full-time job. So how's that going to work? Are you going to have to uh, come after the, hours and train, you know, get uh, them probably, up? Hopefully whoever it is or whatever, either position, whatever the council decides on and everything, I'm um, going to hopefully get together with that individual or those individuals. Um, obviously after working hours right. right do we have any time frame on when the um, uh, decision um, after I think after May 16th the six, sixth or sixth wait well no the BA posting was until May 18th and the CFO, CFO one I think is posted through I think May 8th or 6th I believe so yeah so in your apps I mean you'll be the part-time yeah. but in your oh. absence if something needs to get done during working hours, who, who's the second in command that'll take over That's during that time yeah. period? There isn't. There's two, you know, two people that work in my office that one does accounts payable, I'm sorry, and one does payroll, um, and they will be fielding questions and hopefully nothing emergent will arise. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Good to know. Thank you. In the uh, CFO position that was advertised, um, do we have it in there that they must have uh, or must be a qualified purchasing agent with the state? Either that or or, a, or must uh, must obtain. It's listed. The ad with, was listed that with way. A, that. With a time frame? Uh, not at this point. Not until I would say until you start interviewing and everything, and then come up with a plan for the individual who you, you know, want to offer the position to. Who interviews Denise? I would suggest. Um, the finance committee, mm -hmm. um, perhaps with the auditor. So nobody's um, been if interviewed. If you wanted yet, myself right? to be involved, that would be fine, but that's entirely up to the um, governing body. For both positions? Same, same scenario? I would think so. I would, I would strongly suggest also the mayor be, be definitely involved. Yeah, um, depending on how many right. council members are. Yes. Available. If so not, I'll, I'll be briefed by <clears throat> someone. So we have four for the CFO and one, for, and then when do we? Uh, we're we're going to continue to. Well, the ads are still posted. Run. Yeah. Um, and like I said, the one runs, I believe, to either May sixth or eighth, and as Gabrielle said, the other one runs, yeah, I think, the eighteenth. Okay. Um, if you guys choose, you can start interviewing sooner than that. You don't have to wait till the deadline. Right. Mr. Mayor, I have two comments. One with the interview process. Couldn't you have four people there, but you just rotate out of the room, interview the person, and step back in? I, I don't believe you can. No? no? Okay, good. My second question was, Denise, God love you, and I know I do. Are you um, just looking out for the borough here? There's a salary for the part-time finance officer, and there's a salary for the interim business administrator. Are you both of those on a part-time basis until we can get somebody? Yes, and hopefully within a month, I'm hoping that you guys have something in place. Okay, so the breakdown of 12000 a year, you break it down to an hourly thing? The twelve breaks down to a monthly because that's how the salary ordinance was set. Okay. And then what happened was in the CFO, you guys set a, um, you set a yearly range and then you also set an hourly range. Okay. So a salary, a, an hourly range was not set for the administrator at the time. But that's also because our business administrator's a, that title is already a part-time position. Right. So okay. we that's why the range right. is only twelve to twenty mm -hmm. because it's already an established part-time position. Where the part-time CFO was not an established part-time position. So it made it, you would have otherwise had to adopt an additional resolution or ordinance for okay. putting caveats for that. Okay. And this is uh, this particular resolution is until 
we get somebody else. We yeah, hire right. you somebody else cut loose, definitely. Thank you. The Councilman Ligotti Try brings up. You still might be here either. Okay. <laughs> okay. The Councilman Ligotti brings up a good question regarding the, uh, you know, having being able to rotate people through, and I understand that might not be feasible, but. Are we allowed to record the interview this so is, that other council I, members this is could? This what I would suggest, and the other municipalities follow the following format. You designate, for instance, I think there's a suggestion of finance committee. What, what you typically would do is review the resumes that come in um, and meet as a, a, a certain committee, let's say finance committee, and weed out the ones that just don't look promising. Select um, two or three or, or four that do look promising and then have them in to meet with the committee. And after the committee does meet with, with um, those individuals, they may then schedule, a, a, in essence, an interview. And then you could do that with the whole governing body in an executive session for the one or two promising mm -hmm. candidates. And then the council can proceed that way in making a decision. I'd like that, Eric, if we could work, make that work. That would be great. That might be good. Okay. Anything uh, else on this or, uh, resolution? Just, just one more question. The, the two positions that are posted, are they being posted as full-time positions or part-time or? The CFO is posted as a full-time position. The administrator is posted as a part-time position. Thank you. Pretty much the same as the way it currently. Okay. That, yeah, that was so question. the CFO, once they come in, then you, we could ask if they were interested in doing the part-time like you do um, now? Yeah, if you guys, it's up to, you know, we really weren't sure how to go, and I think the mayor and, and Council President Dixon and I spoke, and, all, and I was asked to advertise it that way. But if you can get it to work the other way, that, you know, whatever way works. Well, what were you guys thinking? Two different people or one person? It all depends what, uh, <coughs> what we get in the way of the candidates. Yeah, you, 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 you won't know until. The, the person, what you think you want may not be out there. So that's why I, I think I mentioned this to Eric at the finance <coughs> chairman. You got you to put the resumes out and see what's out there. Okay. A lot of times, places envision what they want and it's not out there. So you may have to take a step back and say, okay, well, look, this is all we have. These are the decisions we have to make. Okay. Any other thing, Councilman Revolinsky? Denise is a QPA? No, I am not a QPA. Oh, you don't have a QPA here? Because oh, okay. no, I, I thought she was, and if no. she was, even if she no. left, we still have a temporary period where we can have the same QPA uh, Stash. threshold in the absence of a QPA, except since she's not one, we don't have that benefit. Yeah, it limits our ability with purchasing, so. Right, and that's why we're, we're building into it that the person has to be willing to get their QPA. Right. Okay. Anything else on this uh, resolution? Yeah, one more question. Is there a certification for business administrator? No. So there's no certification. Ooh. There's there's nothing. Well, no, it's not a light. It's not a, li a professional license or anything. They do no. have one now. Through it's not a certification okay. like CFO, they, tax collector, tax not, assessor. No, they have one now. There's the no civil service. You know, there's there's quite there's frankly, it's very there. loosely written the statute down on business administration. Denise, they do have it's one. Your local ordinance they do would prevail one. about the qualifications. Civil service is certified for the manager. Over the statutory requirement of the BA. Some towns want a master's degree. Some want. PhD, someone, you know. Civil service degree. actually does offer a course that can give you a certified public manager. It's not a required license. It's just an option. Um, they send out course information regarding it. Um, it's similar. It can go towards credits for a master's if you choose to go for that, but it's actually called certified public manager, CPM. Um, again, it's, just, it's not the same as like a clerk's license, I'm required by statute to have one, right. and there's statutory requirements to meet it. It's a class that, and a designation um, that offers managerial experience uh, and other things like that to help build your repertoire and credentials. So the position that we posted for, is it college degree required, master's required? What, is there any requirements in what we, what we posted for? I'm not sure. I don't recall. I don't think so. I don't think so. But it was, it was prior years, you know, experience and everything. Um, I'm sorry, how many years? Um, I don't know if it was, a, I think it was a minimum of five. I'm not sure though. Five years experience. I think that's yeah. what you had indicated to me, thing. that the, your advertisement required five year, minimum of five years experience as business mm -hmm. administrator. Mm -hmm. Anything else? 
Will the clerk call the roll? Council President Dixon? Aye. Councilman Farkas? Aye. Councilwoman Kerber? Aye. Councilman Ligotti? Aye. Councilwoman Mayor? Aye. Councilman Revolinsky? Aye. Mr. Mayor, we have six ayes. So moved. Will the clerk please read resolution 18-130 by title only, please? Authorizing certain personnel actions, recreation, pool, and SAC. Okay, you've heard the reading of this resolution. What is your pleasure? Move that. Go ahead, Randy. Move that the resolution be adopted. <laughs> Second. I have a motion by Councilman Farkas, seconded by Councilman Revolinsky, that the resolution is adopted. Is there any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I have uh, concerns um, considering we do have only one supervisor and one manager. What is the direction we're going to be going? Are we going to be hiring a management staff or f further hire management and supervisory positions for the pool? Is there any update? Did someone speak to that? Well, that's correct. I, I was just going to say, you have all the information that I have. Okay. Um, I think Julie's done a great job in disseminating the information as it comes in out to all the members of the council. So I guess at some point, the rec department would be looking for direction as far from the finance committee, uh, how they, how they want to move forward. If, because if the, if the finance committee doesn't think that it's a good idea to hire a management company, we shouldn't really be spending our time um, going, trying to look down that road. So <coughs> I, just, I, was, I was hoping to get some direction as far as which, which way people want to go to get this uh, issue resolved. Well, in terms of the management company, um, Gabriella, how long would that process take in term, and what is the process? Because we did only get one in and it's over the threshold. So how right. would Council the process be? asked me about this today. I don't know what exactly is being looked for. Okay. Um, so I can't. I, Someone's got to take this bull or by this the horns. Whether this is a bid or an RFP is dependent on what's being asked for. So it needs to be researched and decided what exactly is being looked for and requested. And then that's how you move forward before going out for a bid or an RFP. A licensed professional it goes to RFP if it's not a licensed professional you go out to bid but again th those are all determinations and things that need to be identified before any I, I can't I don't have any can't give input I know I'm not a per I'm not the qual I'm not a qualified person agent, agent I'm the clerk I happen to have knowledge about contract law but <coughs> I certainly do not have knowledge about a requirements of management of a pool that's so I can't help you identify what's needed in that case. I can, that all would all need to be provided okay. before I could. Can I, I, I have this. a quick question. Um, when is our next council meeting? May 14th. May, May 14th? Yes. Yes, you think of okay. So how long would that RFP have to be advertised? An RFP has a minimum advertisement timeline of 20 days. A bid is 10 days. Okay. It and just depends on. <laughs> right. And do we know when the tentative opening for the pool is? June 8th is June the 16th. soft opening for training. No. no. Oh, yeah. But June 16th was supposed to be, right? 16th okay. is full. Okay. So, so, so. Here, here's the situation then. So we need to, if we're going to go with the management, you have to get your RFPs out so you can get them back in time to hire someone to run the pool. Would that be correct, Mr. Bruder? Does that, that sound? If you're going the RFP process. Right, if, if you're, you're going, going the RFP way and try to hire a management firm. Well, you, again, uh, that's what I'm saying. You I have don't, to do it sooner than later. You do have to do it sooner than later, but again, until you identify what you are actually looking for, I, you, I can't tell you whether it's a bid or an RFP. An RFP is very specific to licensed professionals and in certain instances. So unless I know, and as I'm saying, I can't, I don't know what's necessary for that. It's not my wheelhouse. The contract law specifically states RFPs are for certain types of licensed professionals that you have to go through a certain type of accreditation in order to be considered for an RFP. Okay, then let, can, so, we, can, we, can we do this? Can, can you reach out to Mr. Brew tomorrow, figure out what the council would need to do in order to move this along, whether it's going to be an RFP, or however this has got to work because if well, we have a, a soft opening for June uh, and this thing has to be advertised for 20 days or whatever, they have to be hired before they're going to start working. Right. The department needs to identify what their needs are. Okay. There's no way for us to, I can't identify the needs of a department. That's the responsibility of the department 
to identify their needs and then we can advise them on whether it's bid specifications or an RF, a request for proposal. But that needs to be identified before any advice can be given. Okay, so why don't, why don't we do this then tomorrow um, if all, all people are in the building. Uh, why don't everybody get together that needs to be there into the round room, uh, figure out what the needs are, figure out what the plan of action is, uh, because if we need to put out um, something that needs to be advertised for 20 days, uh, we really need to do that sooner than later. Uh, and if we're going to go for just employing people, then that needs to go out. <coughs> However, we get that out, smoke signals, whatever, uh, and get these people hired. Because um, we need to start selling pool badges if we're going to open up. Um, so I'm hoping that something like that could happen <coughs> tomorrow or the next day. Do they have to be a resident in order to manage the pool? I'm not sure. I no, just never be an employee anyway. Well, you have, you have to be a certified pool operator, operator right? right? That's it. Okay. I looked yeah. it up today. You need a certified pool operator, which we don't have because our previous management staff decided not to return, return this year. Well, now, know. we're less than two months away from the soft opening date, and we're sitting here looking at taking away one of the most valuable assets we have, even though Last year it lost us $34,000. Valuable assets when it comes to quality of life in this town is the pool. Two months away and we don't have any management staff. And now we're being asked to look at, what's this about, 15 employees for the pool, which is fine, this is normal, to say, hey, we've interviewed these people, they're going to be good lifeguards, so let's, let's hire them. But we're going to hire them. We don't even have people to operate the pool during the week. Someone dropped the ball here. And we're at two meetings a month, taking up time, arguing about BS half of the time, trying to make stupid points, and we're letting something like our pool slip away, that the SAC program relies upon, that the REC program relies upon. And, and I mean, this is ridiculous. And we're, we're blowing past it like, uh, well, we'll figure it out. We got two months and possibly 20 days for advertisement. This is absurd. I'm sorry, but we got to do something and get our ducks in a row. This cannot continue to occur. Well, Councilman Revelinski, the ducks are in a row. It's unfortunate that three of the supervisors, one left to retirement, one left on medical, one left for personal reasons, all within the last month of uh, the last week of March. I'm so, so you know, if this happened in September, I would be with you. But this happened at the end of March. So we're doing everything that we possibly can do to get this stuff done. The other thing about this is I believe, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to need these employees anyway, whether we have a management company or not. So, so the, the issue at hand is hiring these employees, which we need to do anyway. So it's really, it's not ridiculous. And, and to, to your point, the pool was never designed to make money. The pool never made money from the day that it was a mud hole. It was never designed. It was a quality of life perk for the residents of the town. It was never designed to make money. So to throw that out at this point is a little disingenuous on your part. I, I don't since you've, been, you've lived in this town your whole life. Yeah. And you know what? It's not acceptable to me that we have to raise water rates when, to gain $300,000 and we'll get the entire town down here. But we're going to let $35,000 slip out of our hands every year. I asked at the recreation advisory meeting back in August, let's get the numbers together. Let's see what we charge for daily passes, how many we sold. If we increased by that, that by a dollar, would it generate more people buying seasonal passes? Would that help overcome this? Do we need to look at outside sourcing? And what's been done since then? So far, in 2018, we've had one rec advisory meeting to which yourself didn't show up. No, we actually, and we, I and I another actually, I'm oh, sorry, maybe it was me. last week. That's it, right. We had two and you didn't show up. Just Julie and I showed up. That's right. Yes. That's, yes. Well, thank you. look, it's poor taste to try and run a recreation department, number one shorthanded, which we made the motion at the last meeting to hire someone, another part-timer. Right, it's a little late in the game, though. A little late in the game? Yeah. You're in charge of the recreation department. No, no, I'm the liaison. Wait a sec, wait a second. I'm speaking, you'll have your turn. Mr. My Mayor, problem is... Me. Mr. Mayor, I think on, Councilman uh, Revelinski made a good point when he first started to speak about us bickering back and forth. I believe that you came up with a very nice solution to get started tomorrow and I don't think he's taking his own advice I think we should take a step back the mayor had a good 
suggestion on what we should do to go forward to fix this problem, and we really should stop bickering about it here today. I, I would agree. Yeah. Gentlemen, can we do this? Can we take all of this energy we have and passion for this point and bring it to the meeting tomorrow? Because I think if we get in a room and everybody talks and we get it figured out and um, we, we kind of focused in on it, I think we'll be okay. So I, I would agree with Councilman Ligotti. I, I would ask the council to kind of tone it back a little bit and let's move on with this if that would be uh, okay. I do Look, I do appreciate the fact that you guys are very passionate about it as most people in town are about the pool. So let's, let's get together, take that energy, focus it in on getting this thing done, uh, having a meeting, making the phone calls we need, and putting this thing in motion. Uh, people are counting on us, folks, they're counting on us. Mr. Hey, Mayor? The kids want to go swimming, and uh, I think we need the pool open. Uh, may I just make one quick comment about that? I'm no, on the finance. No, this is all part of the discussion. Yeah. Just if, if, if I may, I, I, I have had people reach to me and, and say you don't keep people focused in on what the point is. So the point no. is 18-130. If this, it has to do with that, yeah. we're gold. It does. It, it, it does. It goes to the point of the pool losing money because I was actually looking at the pool budget this weekend and I noticed that, you know, there are certain, there's expenses that go out, there's revenues that come in. However, what I noticed and I wanted to look at is the SAC program makes a lot of money for the town. And the SAC, no, and the SAC kids are at the pool almost every day, but there's nowhere in that budget that indicates that there's a, a SAC fee or, you know, that that, that goes toward, you know, that, that they're there every day and SAC is bringing in money. So when you look at these pool budget specifically, it looks like it's a loss, but really when you look at the overall rec budget that includes the SAC profits, then it doesn't look like you have this big a number. So if you took some of that SAC and, and moved it over to the pool budget, it wouldn't be a $35,000 loss. So okay. I think it's part of how we do our finances. Even though it's all, if you looked at the big umbrella, it might not seem as a shocking $35,000. Okay, well, then I would suggest this. Part A would be is solving the, uh, the uh, management of the pool problem. That would be problem A. Problem B would be just getting breakdowns and take a look at the various components of the uh, finances uh, of the pool. Agreed. If we can do that. I agree. But look, the management of the pool is first. The other stuff we can get to at a later at a later time. But let's let's key in on the management and get that that solved. But um, I think we should. We're going to go ahead and vote on these people hiring, get them, getting them hired. Yeah, we're going to we're going to take the role uh, right now. Good. Council President Dixon. Aye. Councilman Farkas. Aye. Councilwoman Kerber. Aye. Councilman Ligotti. Aye. Councilwoman <laughs> Mayor. Aye. Councilman Revolinsky. Aye. Mr. Mayor, we have six ayes. So moved. Next, we'll hear the report from the Department of Finance, Administration, and Planning, chaired by Council President Ronald Dixon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, since our last meeting, the Finance Committee has met again, and we've cut as you Per from Mr. S uh, from our auditor over there, we cut an additional twenty thousand dollars out of the budget. That's the reason that there's no vote tonight, and that will be coming up for a vote. Um, Department of Code Enforcement. I'm happy to re report. Ask them to look into the Ford Avenue situation, and following is what they have found out. After several lengthy delays, the demolition and cleanup of the Ford Avenue site is expected to resume again in early May. The major problem which needed to be rectified with regard to locating the existing fire suppression line was slated to begin in early January and it was delayed due to all the foul cold weather that we had. As we know, the water line there, every time they took a building down, they ended up puncturing the water line and they had to repair it. So they asked if they could run an additional line from the farther down by uh, Northbrook Drive additional line up above ground so it doesn't happen anymore. This isn't a process of being done. It should be done soon. And once that new fire line is installed, demolition and cleanup should progress to near completion by late spring, early summer of 18. 
An often made complaint regarding the site is the stockpile of the concrete from the buildings that have been demolished. Property owner's position from the start of this project was that the concrete and masonry materials will remain on site and be pulverized and used as approved fill for the site. We are working with the property owner and the contractor to have the materials stored closer to the center of the site and out of view of the general public. That's where Ford Avenue stands, and that's my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Next, we will hear from the Department of Public Safety, chaired by Councilman Nicholas Legati. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My first report is going to be <coughs> a, a letter from the mayor from the East Brunswick, town of East Brunswick. Um, dear neighbors, I am writing to, writing to you regarding the speed limit changes that will be going into effect very <laughs> shortly on roads closest to your homes. Over the past year, I have received many calls and letters from residents regarding the safety of the roads on Church Lane, Fresh Ponds Road, and Riva Avenue. Most of the issues are in regards with speed and vehicular traffic, accidents, and unsafe driving. In order to consider any change in speed limits, New Jersey state law requires that our engineering department conduct a comprehensive engineering and traffic evaluation. Any proposed change must be consistent with the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices and the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. This is prescribed by the New Jersey State Statute 39-4-98. If you ever have any trouble sleeping, just text this and you'd be, you know, you'll go right to sleep. <laughs> As part of the study, the department reviewed recent traffic counts, speed survey data, traffic accident data, and the current roadway geometry. If you would like to review the traffic evaluation, please feel free to stop by our planning and engineering department. As a result of the above studies, we are reducing the speed limits on the following roads. Church Lane reduced from 45 to 35. Fresh Ponds Road, reduced from 40 to 35. Riva Avenue, reduced from 40 to 30 miles an hour. In addition, due to the high number of accidents and current fl flashing lights at the intersection of Church Lane and Fresh Ponds Road, need to be upgraded and fully actuated signal. This is scheduled for 2019. Safety, safety to our residents and those who visit East Brunswick will remain my number one concern. Please be aware that these new speed restrictions will be strictly enforced. I thank you for your continued support and appreciation and efforts to all those who reached out to me on this issue. We are a great community because of our active participation in your government. Respectfully, Brad J. Cohen, Mayor, Township of East Brunswick. Uh, that's one. Uh, second is... Uh, the police report. Last Thursday, the police chief had a meeting in these chambers here, a safety, a building safety meeting um, with a consultant, and I would say 99% of the borough employees, except for the ones that had to keep us running during the day, uh, attended the meeting. It was very informative. It was very uh, a good meeting that the chief ran on uh, safety within these buildings. If uh, uh, a gunman would ever come in, where to go, what to do. It was very well organized. It was very well taken. <laughs> um, I, I'd like to thank the chief for doing that for us as well. He also, um, part, he, he, we went to the Board of Ed meeting the same night on last Thursday, and I attended that as well, and they had a, a mini uh, safety meeting for the Board of Ed as well. Um, that was uh, well attended. There were some questions for the chief there. He handled them as far as safety within our school buildings. And there is a consultant that the Board of Head has hired uh, to, give, to guide them and working well with our police department so that everything is covered. Anything that you can think of, that company and the chief and our police department has covered. Please feel safe that this building and our school buildings are, are very well safe and there is a very good plan in place. That's my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Next, we will hear from the Department of Utilities, chaired by Councilman Richard Revolinsky. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A uh, short report this evening. Uh, residents should be happy to know that our most recent round of lead sampling did pass. Um, unfortunately, the residents might not be happy to hear that we had a sanitary sewer manhole um, frame and cover 
collapse, uh, which revealed a large hole in a sanitary sewer out on Georgia's Road. This sewer or manhole is part of our force main system, the continuation of which dumps into New Brunswick. Um, so we're going to have to incur some costs to repair that. Um, we'll be sending out notices uh, for the for the day that the work will occur in order to uh, try to reduce our sewer flows. We'll have trucks on standby to bring uh, our sewage to another location as it comes into our pump station since the force main will be out of service at that time. Um, we had ongoing discussions with our attorney, engineer, and utility director regarding lead services in the borough and the most recent updates from the DEP regarding our requirements that should we fail lead sampling in the future, what we will be held to uh, do and actions we'll need to take regarding lead services. And um, also the residents that were here at the last meeting, uh, your voices were heard loud and clear. Um, we are evaluating things for 2018 for the water and sewer rates and um, trying to find alternate uh, avenues or sources to lighten the burden and make sure that we can improve the quality of water to the residents as well as uh, decrease the cost. So as we progr progress with that, we'll keep you informed. That concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Next, we will hear from the Department of Public Works and Recycling, chaired by Councilwoman Dorianne Carver. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my report tonight uh, is basically May 5th. 2018 from 8:30 to noon we will be having a townwide cleanup uh, so I've reached out to several groups uh, let's hope we have another successful cleanup that'll be throughout the town uh, in addition I did attend the 2018 New Jersey electric vehicle conference uh, there are pilot programs in Montclair Woodbridge and uh, let's see, I forgot the other town um, but they are uh, definitely expanding their electrical vehicles charging stations uh, in Montclair, they have 137. They want to shoot for 800 throughout the, their town. Uh, and there are applications still being accepted for uh, a rebate or, you know, return grant money uh, in the future if we decide to do that at the new um, Washington Avenue uh, parking lot and complex. So uh, that was a very informative uh, session. And in addition, um, but it also helps us uh, when we do attend some of the meetings. Uh, also, um, we did the walk and health fair on uh, Saturday, the 21st. We had a good turnout, a uh, good group of people. It was uh, pretty successful. We had about $625 uh, for donations uh, and vendor costs uh, for the tables that they uh, had uh, at the event. In addition, we also had uh, some food donations so that added to the uh, it's about 600 um, pounds. And in addition, the mayor was the one who led the whole walk. We had a um, great group of people, very 15 door prizes. So that was great that we gave out uh, for each of the walker registrations. So we had a good uh, event. And uh, I appreciate the Milltown Police. They stayed with us. It was a bike that they used and uh, a vehicle just to make sure when we were in Washington that it was blocked for any vehicle traffic. And, but the rest of the way, it was just uh, uh, our uh, Officer Rosario uh, on the bike. And we had Council President Dixon, Councilwoman Mayor, and of course the Mayor was there and myself. Thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you. Next we'll hear from the Department of Environmental Health and Social Services, chaired by Councilwoman Trina Mayer. Uh, I have no report tonight, Mayor. The next scheduled uh, Environmental commission, commission meeting would be this coming Wednesday, but we're go going to cancel that because the chair and the vice chair will be out of town. We were scheduled to meet with uh, Mr. McClellan that night, but we'll reschedule with him as well and have a report at later on in May or June. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we'll hear from the Department of Recreation, chaired by Councilman Randy Farkas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Along with daily operations of deposits, SAC billing, rec and SAC registration forms, purchasing requests, as well as scheduling and interviewing new seasonal staff for the summer, the recreation SAC departments have the following. SAC reminders. Summer SAC packets are now available online and at the rec SAC office. Summer SAC will begin on Monday, June, Jul um, excuse me, July 2nd through August 24th. Please note the registration deadline is May 18th. 
Albert Avenue summer recreation registration forms are now out. They are available online and have been email blasted throughout the school as well. Camp is set to begin on July 9th through August 17th, <coughs> 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Fundamental Forest T-Ball is set to start on Saturday, May 5th. Registration is still ongoing for all four-year-old boys and girls interested in T-Ball. Spring soccer began last weekend. We ask that all parents and guardians be patient with our coaches. The teams are large and some have only one coach. We are in need of volunteer coaches. Spring child yoga begins Saturday, April 28th through June 16th, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. for ages 8 to 12 years old. This is a drop-off program. If your child has not been called for an interview for summer employment, please be patient. We are very limited on office staff and still setting up interviews. We have extended the pool application deadline for managers and supervisors. If you are interested, there is still time to apply. Must be 21 years or older. We have tickets for both M uh, Major League Baseball games. Yankees versus Tampa Bay, which is the Old Timers Day, Sunday, June 17th, and Mets versus the Los Angeles Dodgers, Sunday, June 24th. Seats for both games are field level, third baseline. Great idea for Father's Day and graduation gifts. The deadline for both baseball games has been extended until all tickets are sold. Please call the Recreation Department if you would like to reserve your seat. The Recreation Committee will meet on Wednesday, May 16th, 2018 at 7 p.m. at Borough Hall. That's the end of the report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is introduction of ordinances, and tonight we have one. Will the clerk please read ordinance? Um, oh. Resolution. Resolution. Sorry, yeah. It's actually <laughs> Resolution 18-132 by title. Amendment to 2018 Municipal Budget. Now, the answer and motions on these will be as they were in ordinance, is that correct? Right, pass on first reading, publish recording. Publish recording law, okay. Yes, but instead of saying ordinance, resolution. resolution. Okay. Please. I move that this, res this resolution be adopted on first reading, published according to law, and that a public hearing be held at our next regular council meeting, mm -hmm. which I believe is going to be the 21st, right? It's not instead the next 14th. regular council meeting, but the right. May 21st the 21st meeting. instead of 14th. Yes. Huh? Second. Okay, I have a motion by Council President Dixon, seconded by uh, Councilman Revolinsky, that the resolution be adopted on first reading, published according to law, and that a public hearing be held at our next regularly scheduled council meeting on May 21st, 7 p.m. Borough Hall. Is there any discussion? Yes, there uh, is, yes. Mr. Mayor. I, uh, I, I'm sorry, Dorian. I'm just wondering why. Okay. That's all. All right. Is it 18131 or 132? 132 is supposed to be executive session. Somebody said no, 132. No, the changes, I, you've got a oh. packet of changes to the, your the agenda. Yeah, that's, oh. Mine's stapled and it's still all right. Yeah, it's changed to 132. Okay. Okay, Mr. Mayor, um, I have an issue with item A on the proposed amendment. I believe that uh, we cannot accept the $9,400 from this grant due to the fact that I don't think it was obtained correctly. I think there may have been some. I think there's a large uh, miscue in the application. I think it would be wrong of us to accept this money knowing that, that there might be a mistake in it. So uh, I am going to vote no on this amendment, but I, if anybody values my opinion, I think that we need to look into this particular $9,400 before we vote on this amendment. I don't think it should be in there. I am really convinced that we need to send that money back as well. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to point out that uh, in this amendment, due to the efforts of uh, the Finance Committee, we've been able to drop out $32,000 from the budget. Good. Which is why we have to have the amendment, because it changed by a certain percentage, so 
You can't just make right. the change. You have to do a public hearing and presentations. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I saw the same paperwork that Councilman Legati saw, and I agree with Councilman Legati. There's a, there's an issue with that amount. Um, however, I would like to thank Councilwoman Mayor for bringing it up, and and the Finance Committee for going back for a second look at the budget and. and doing just as Councilman Revolinsky said, cutting some more money out of the budget. I think that's a good thing. Um, unfortunately, the way the budget is set up and with this number in there, I can't support this either because of that number. Um, if we can somehow get that number out and vote on the budget without that number, that would be fantastic. But other than that, I can't support it because I think, like Councilman Lugati said, that money should be sent back. Is this number something new, Denise? I, didn't, I don't remember ever seeing this before. This was a grant that we received. Um, it was applied for, gosh, last year sometime. Um, and I just obtained the backup documents. And um, I sent them on to Councilman Lagati because he had requested it. Um, I will forward it on to the borough attorney for his review and see what his thoughts are on it. Um, I, I will also scan it and email it to the entire council. So, because my concern was, I mean, we, you know, we, we met and we went through to, to cut and, you know, this wasn't on there. So, is, no, I, I'd hate for this to stop us from doing what we set out to do, which, which was to, to cut right. the budget. So, is this, is this number imperative in the budget since it was, didn't even figure into what we discussed when we were talking about it anyway? This is. Can, they pull? Well, can, can we just can do without well, that and then the approve the rest? You could, you could, but it's in the amendment now. And item one would be if, if you were to let it go through, you don't necessarily have to authorize the charges. Or we verbally mm -hmm. adjust the amendment tonight. There is a mechanism subsequent to the final adoption of the budget that you could appropriate this money if you were to clarify it. You know, say in June you were to get clarification or rework the, the grant agreement. You could do a what's called a Chapter 159 appropriation, which has to do with a new item of revenue with an offsetting appropriation. I mean, there's a mechanism available for money that comes in subsequent to the adoption of the budget. But the other alternative would be that you don't authorize any charges against it and let it go through. No one's saying you have to charge okay. against it. Okay? But either way, I mean... I'm so convinced that I really am convinced that we shouldn't be accepting this money, that if we could alter the motion to exclude A, I would be much happier, and, and I would vote yes on this amendment, but I, I don't want to vote yes on this amendment if that number is in there. I, I cannot do it. You actually would exclude the revenue side, which is three, okay, follow me on yep. the top. You'd mm -hmm. exclude that, and then you'd also exclude um, A on the second sheet. They both go, they go concurrent, so they both go hand in hand. That's correct. Okay. There's no tax impact. Right. So there's, you, would have to, you would have to exclude both of them at the same time. I don't know who, so there's, who made there's the no, motion, there's but there's no it, tax impact, no. right? Mm -mm. It just changes a lot of numbers, but now there's no tax impact at all. The tax impact was from the, what was it, how much did we cut? 30? Uh, 32,000? 32. So that was how, what, a tax point? Uh, a little less, no, it's about three quarters of a tax point. The tax point is 44 and change. Now, just in case, I don't think I am, but if I'm wrong, we can put the 9,400 back in. Well, what happens then is after this, this budget would be, would be adopted without the 9,400, down the road it would be a resolution that council would approve to do what is known as the auditor said, it's a chapter 159. It's a special item of revenue and, a, and, a, uh, and the appropriation side. That's how you get your grants in. If you receive any grants after adoption of the budget, that's how you get them into the budget. And again, so, no big deal, correct? No. Would we be able to accept it after mm -hmm. the fact, given that we were offered the grant money prior to adoption of the budget? Yes. <laughs> I got it. In right. other words, if it doesn't find its way into this, we've received the money already, by yeah, the way. Yeah, the money's come in. And yeah, you could, you know. Is there also a mechanism for removing the monies from the budget after adoption? Yes. Mm -hmm. so, you can cancel it. You can cancel it. Can cancel it. Can cancel it right. Adoption, you can uh, eliminate any appropriation mm -hmm. by passing a resolution right. canceling the appropriation. So you have quite a few options. Yeah, so it, it 
this whole thing is kind of null and void, whether it oh, gets done, okay. <laughs> done tonight or not. It's just a matter of changing what numbers are on the paper. The money came in already. Do we have a, 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 a place to spend it? No, you don't technically until not you appropriate it. It's, it's so not a, Was it for a specific, the grant was for a specific thing? Was it like for equipment or something? I will scan this in an email to the mayor and council. Um, it was, I don't know if it even says here. John, can I ask a question? What's the issue? Or well, we can't discuss that? I don't think you, you haven't even seen it. No. I haven't seen well, that's, it. Yet. No, great. Then. I think we should just go ahead and approve it and then worry about it later. But By everyone being able to that, review that, it all, that's, that's, that's fine, it. But I'm telling you, if you value my opinion, I don't think we should be accepting this money. That's all I'm saying. It's a grant, and you can always return it. It's done before. It, trust me. It's a grant. With other people was, not there's, falling there's, through. This, this application was not filled out properly. It's you know, and I don't want to use the term falsified, but I don't think it's got the correct information. And the amount that we received is based on that particular statement in this in this <coughs> application. So it's wrong. I think the advice from the auditor is we can go. We can. We can. Um, approve this subject to the amendment by removing the 9400 now we can investigate it and we can always go back and amend the budget if it turns out that the $9400 is appropriately received is that correct right. well we but we don't want to have to go through another amendment okay, okay. to eliminate we should, this we should have delay it, it. Right. put it in and we change it all right, all right. Mm -hmm. i mean uh, well, that? i mean well, I, I that the money came in already and the budget's still open can we do a 159? You can do a 159. We've done them in places where right. you know you've adopted. I think we've even done it here. You adopted it at you know five after seven, and then at eight thirty you do a chat 159. Right. I don't want to prolong the meeting any longer. I'm telling you, I'm voting okay. no because that money's in there, and I don't think it should be. If anybody up here values my opinion, that's the way I'm voting. That's why I'm voting that way. You can, whoever made the motion, if they want to change it to take it out, I would appreciate it. If they don't then don't. Uh, you do what you want to do. Councilman Ligotti, I value your opinion. I think this definitely needs to be looked into further, but I will vote for it because we can take it out later. Okay. So. Yeah, like you said, you can put it there. <laughs> Both are options. You, you can say to someone, do not charge a dime to it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what you can do. Or we can take it out now and just clean up. And my secretary can clean I don't it. see what's hard about taking it out who now says, and cleaning it up later. Who's in charge of not paying a dime on that? We are. Who? Well, the CFO. CFO. The CFO. Me. Yeah. Me, me. The CFO is me. the one who says. Well, the next. What happens when you're when you're not here? Oh, trust me. <laughs> I will take care of it. No need to worry, Councilwoman. So we are voting on this on the condition that. Well, what do we want? Do you we can do? either pull it, pull it, you or can say don't touch it. John, are you? There's a which do you? Can they there make is a motion there's, a, to amend? there's a motion on the floor, right? We, we have a motion to. Has someone offered a motion to adopt this amendment? There, there's a motion yes, there to adopt. Motion. So someone can make a motion currently. To amend. Council to President to Dixon made a motion to adopt, seconded by Councilman Revolinsky. During the course. Do we need to amend to mm -hmm. to say that we're going to do further um, don't have to. exploration of the grant? Oh, you don't have If to. it gets passed. No, you don't have to do that. You can just do that. That's that's not something that requires a resolution. But if Councilman Lagatti would like to have it removed, can he make a motion he can to make amend a, the yes. amendment? Yes, you can make a superseding motion okay. to That's modify this resolution. <laughs> <Does> that <work? laughs> That's, That's what I would like. I would like to make a motion to, to, remove, it. to remove it from this resolution. The, uh, Second. A motion to amend supersedes okay, got it. a main motion. So. I mean, it's, it's really six of one, half dozen of another, right? Yes. Yeah, but if you're... Mm -hmm. It is. It. Well, I think if we there's can just any, let if this go through as it is, and it could be changed you, you or could, could be amended. Say C, you could say to the CFO, That's, "Look, don't then, charge a dime to it, it until we resolve it." But, Worst case is you refund the money. But Mr. Okay, Mr. We're building the pyramids over again. Mr. Bruder, what if there is some irregularity with it? Then what happens is it goes on a bill. If it has to be returned, oh, yeah, I would right. defer to the. I would defer to your CFO. Right, the appropriation gets canceled, the money gets returned, and it's washed, and there's well, everything's null and void. But procedurally, there has just been a superseding motion by Councilman Ligotti, seconded by Councilman Revolinsky. All right. All right. Councilman Farkas. Councilman Farkas. Oh, there's Councilman Farkas. I heard the voice coming from the left. <laughs> so that superseding motion has to be voted on first. 
Will the clerk please call the roll? Council President Dixon. Just one real quick question. We're voting just to take that out. Right, you're me No, I voted no. No. Councilman Farkas. Aye. Councilman Kerber. No. Councilman Ligotti. Aye. Councilwoman Mayor. Aye. Councilman Revolinsky. No. Mr. Mayor, we have three ayes and three noes. This is a, a peculiar question that we have. I don't, I know, um, Ms. Savoni, you're of the view that an amendment requires a two thirds vote. I, think it does. I know there's two thirds vote required for an emergency appropriation. I'm just curious. Uh, and I'm, doesn't require two -thirds I don't think it does. I didn't see this in simple the, majority. That's what that's what amendments of the budget requires. That's my understanding as well. So, so but based on that, Mr. Mayor, you can break the tie on this. To table. Okay. Well, I, I haven't seen any of this information or not table that table people change, are speaking sorry. of. So I'm going to vote no. We'll let it go, and then if there's something that it needs to be removed, then it then it can be removed. So, so procedurally now, we return back to the original motion, which was to um, the, the pending resolution 18131. And that's a resolution to approve that, uh, res that resolution 18131. Will the clerk please call the roll? Council President Dixon. Now are we voting? You're voting to, to pass the amendment, as, the amendment to the budget as it stands. We're voting to accept the amendment? No, yes. you're, no. No. The amendment to the budget. You're approving yes. the amendment. The document yes. as it is. Uh, yes, I vote okay. to accept this. <laughs> Councilman Farkas. Yeah, no. Councilwoman Kerber. Aye. Councilman Ligotti. No. Councilwoman Mayor. Aye. Councilman Revolinsky. Aye. Mr. Mayor, we have four ayes and two noes. So moved. Okay. I'm Next going, on the I, agenda. No. Old just, business. I'm just going to ask if the administrator can pass that material on to me. I'll be glad to I take a look at will. it, speak to Mr. Ligotti, and then we can make yes. a determination I'm, with you I'm other as well as how to back it out appropriately. I'm going to scan this in and send us to the entire mayor and council. Could I get a, a, a hard copy put on my desk, please? You sure can. Certainly. Thank you. Okay. Hey. Save a treatment. Oh, you got it? <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <Thank you. laughs> <laughs> wow. I got a little read but thank you. <laughs> Okay, next on the agenda is old business. Is there any old business to come before the council this evening? Hearing none, new business. Any new business to come before the council this evening? Hearing none. Next is audience comments. When recognized, please state your name and address. The microphone in the center of the room. For the record, with that, I will open audience comment. Seeing none, I will close audience comments. Next is council comments. Any member of the council have anything they wish to add at this time? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to make the residents aware, um, yesterday we lost one of our retired officers, uh, passed away, and that would be uh, Skippy. Uh, John Chuck. Yeah, it's, it's a shame, but retired officer, served well in Milltown. Uh, services will be this week, but as council president, my condolences go out to the family. Our thoughts and prayers are with them. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you. Anyone else? No, uh, no. Yes. Oh, so go ahead. No, please. I was just going to say that I attended opening day for the Little League. It was a fantastic event, well attended. 225 youngsters out there on the field getting their uh, moment in the sun before the sun really comes out the rest of the part of the year. So. Uh, hats off to all of them, and I wish them the very best this year. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I was going to say that I appreciate Mr. Uh, Council President Dixon's update on Ford Avenue, because I actually had on my notes to ask <coughs> if we could get a regular report, because one of the questions I get around town almost all of the time from residents is what's going on with the rubble on Ford Avenue. So would it be possible for us to get sort of a update once a month on the, the progress of uh, the cleanup? Best way I can answer that, with the exception of the last two months because of the weather, there was no activity whatsoever. I've always reported at every council meeting what the update was with Ford Avenue, what the status was, court hearings coming up, when they were brought into court, and what the outcome of that was, as long as it was prior to, as long as it was prior to our meetings, and I could report something on it. 
Okay. That's good. So have we had anything late? Well, just off the top of your head, what is the latest update? Well, just what I said, they're going to go ahead and continue doing that. No, I mean the court case. Anything? Court case is, well, Mr. Bruder would know better than me. There are um, bank approval of the um, bankruptcy plan with the three different entities, one of which is Borough of Milltown. Um, there's a hearing that is set to begin later this week, and then we'll resume again in bankruptcy court on May 4th. So that's, it's, that consideration is by the bankruptcy court as to whether to approve the settlement plans with um, the creditors, with Borough of Milltown, and one other entity, I forget which it is. But that's, that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. So once this week, and then again May 4th. I may, uh, I may attend the May 4th hearing if it requires borough participation. I've tried to lay low so that there's not an expense to the borough and just been given periodic updates from various count, uh, legal counsel for the parties, but this upcoming May 4th may be one that I want to attend. Okay. Mr. Uh, Bert, oh. oh, So it would be helpful, though. That, that, was, that was very informative, and I think it would be good if we could have an update because it's, it's a big question, and just to say that it's in litigation really doesn't answer the, the outcry that mm -hmm. seems to come around that issue. Mr. Bruder, I worked with our uh, former borough attorney on this uh, just prior to him becoming a judge, so uh, that kind of ceased. But I, I'd like to develop something where we can show kind of a plan of action or, or what's, what steps have been taken, um, what the borough is capable of doing, not doing, whose responsibilities are what, and post that up on the website. Just because if you look at the Ford Avenue portion on the website, it's confusing, it's a little outdated. The first thing you see is from years ago and you have to go to recent meetings just just a synopsis to say it's private property this is where we're at demolition is ongoing the borough continues to you know levy fines when necessary against them for not following uniform uh, construction code etc cetera, etc cetera. you know for additional information you can find that just giving people a, a picture of what's going on and then we can update that based on the discussions and, and updates that uh, Council President Dixon provides. I would suggest that we, we certainly can do that, but um, some of the subjects may be sensitive because it's a subject of litigation, so we would have to be right. generalized in, in those areas. Well, but just an overall idea of where things stand, where what the progress is, that certainly can be done. Right, yeah. I didn't want to uh, wind up getting us in hot water by posting something up there that right. shouldn't be, so thank you. Any other council So, comments? yeah, I have one, one other thing. So along those lines, the, the, the public outcry has been about that, and I'm sure there, that we all have received a lot of input after the last council meeting regarding the, the rates. And actually, you know, that was a late meeting. I went home. My phone blew up the next day with the text, calls, comments. And, and the thing that... I take away from this, and I'll give a little speech, and I'll, I'll use the mayor's line, get your blanket and your popcorn, because I'm going to talk about it a little bit, is that a hundred or more people were here. Somebody online actually commented on it the whole time. So that, you know, exploded the people at home watching on cable. And the thing that came out of it was that people felt like they weren't heard. And I think that's the... The most important thing that we can do as council people is listen to the public, take their ideas into consideration, and I feel like, from what I've heard, is that they, they didn't feel like their opinions were considered. So, you know, I've thought a lot about the comments. I went back and looked at the, the meeting on YouTube, and, you know, I've, I spoke to the mayor about this, and I appreciate Councilman Revolinsky's comments in the utility um, department because he and I are both on the utilities committee and the finance committee so I'm hoping that we can work together with the mayor to come up with ideas because again we had this shortfall people came up with suggestions ideas ways you know, other places that we can cut and and yet we still have to endure the 30 percent increase so I'm not going to rest until I, you know, we turn over every stone to see what we can do to address this, that we, ha that we have heard you, and that I'm 
personally not happy about it. There, there has to be other options to, to look into, and we, I will continue to do that. To, and the other thing that I was going to say about that is I think that a lot of people said that it, they wouldn't even mind the increase if they felt like they were getting something for it. Most of the people that got up there said, you know, it, it's, it's a big increase, but our water's still brown. We still have, you know, this issue. Now we have the forced main issue again. <laughs> So what can we do going forward to address that? Because we want to make sure that we're not back in the same situation next year, where if we have some catastrophe that we're back knocking on your door for, for another increase. So believe me that it's not just here's your 30% increase, we're done, we'll, we'll see you next year. We're going to keep working at it to see what, what we can do. And please, if you have ideas, you know, send it, you can email us, come to the meeting on, you know, the youth and government meeting on the 14th, or definitely come to the next budget hearing on May 21st, because we'd, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any other one? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I, I have been um, an, analyzing some things. Since I've been here, we've had less personnel down here. We don't hire as all the replacements that we need. So personnel has been limited. Then you also have vacation time. You have sick time. Things come up. Emergencies come up. So we do try. Our staff does try their best to try to accommodate for the branches, uh, for trimming, uh, doing the other works that are necessary throughout the borough. Uh, I know for a fact there was more personnel in, in several of the other departments. It, it's not that way anymore. We don't have that ability to fulfill each and every position that we used to in the past. Uh, some people are now just part-time. They're not full-time positions in some areas. And in addition, we're not hiring uh, additional personnel in, in some of the other departments. So they try to do the best that they can. And with that in mind, um, so we have cut some of those expenses by not hiring full-time in some areas. and. Also with the Board of Education, you're looking at a double digit, double digit, you know, percentage tax increase each year. We're, we're trying to keep it as low as possible and we have. We keep it as a single point digit as much as we can. We, we you know, we don't f throw raises up in the air and just give whopping amounts. We give the standard amounts like we've been doing for many years. We try to accommodate as much as we can for people in the town. And the most people that have st stressed about the increase are the ones that are struggling. And they are. Others realize whatever needs to be adjusted and taken care of. But I've also told them I, too, am looking for ways to reduce other costs. Starting now. This is the time to start now. So when next year comes, we can find other solutions. Right now it's a very difficult time for us and this is a, a challenge that we have to face. And it's unfortunate. Uh, I don't want to pay the increase either, but knowing that this is how we are ba balancing our budget, the increase needs to be there to balance the budget and pass the budget. If we don't pass the budget, we won't have staff tomorrow. We won't have any contractors doing any work. Our professionals won't be paid. And that's just my analysis of what's been happening. We always do something as an emergency. We don't do preventative maintenance. We don't have, we have plans, but nothing's been adhered to for many years, for too long. We just wing it, we just, we can't help it. Most of your staff sometimes are on eggshells because we don't have the financing that we need to really take and work with what we have. We've instituted some tree trimming in, uh, in house. We've also been repairing the fire, uh, fire hydrants, um, replacing them as necessary. They've been cutting corners, uh, like I said before in the past. Their supplies, they found better vendors. We are reducing costs as much as possible. They are trying to make a lot of efforts, all our staff, to try and find better costs with better vendors as well as for supplies. So that's just my... Um, my analysis and, and my thoughts about what we passed on today. Where's the preventative maintenance in the $300,000 shortfall that you voted yes on last time? 
that's what I'm saying. We don't have a plan for preventative maintenance. We do have it written, but we don't have the funds to keep trying to do that all the time. Exactly. We haven't had it for right. too long a time. But exactly. That was, that was exactly the, my point, that we don't have it. Right. So but then there's, <laughs> why say yes to something where you don't, still don't have a plan? Well, there are plans within the departments to do things. And, and there's and only so much funding that they can do, and that's what they work with. It, they have other plans, other wishes, other things that they've put together in their departments. But again, if you don't pass a budget, you can't pay your bills. Right. You can't pay the people. But you can blame the Board of Ed. Well, the Board of Ed is a two-digit, and it's been two-digit for a very long I time. I know, but unfortunately... We're we trying to keep it under that. We, and we, we do are not on the Board of Ed. We're on the Borough Council, and we can only control the Borough Council's funds. Correct. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Seeing none, I'll close council comments and open, open mayor comments. I don't have any. Uh, Nick, would you like to read the resolution for executive session? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's red. <laughs> uh, we're taking action or not taking action? Not taking action. Okay. I move that the resolution, resolution to enter into executive session be approved by council and that council will enter executive session immediately following the vacation of the council chambers by the public. Okay, you've heard the reading of this resolution. What is your pleasure? Move that this resolution be adopted. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Revolinsky, seconded by Councilwoman Mayor, that the resolution is adopted. Is there, ah, we don't need any discussion. Will clerk please call the roll? <laughs> Council President Dixon. Aye. Councilman Farkas. Aye. Councilwoman Kerber. Aye. Councilman Ligotti. Aye. Councilwoman Mayor. Aye. Councilman Revolinsky. Aye. Mr. Mayor, we have six ayes. So moved, we will adjourn for, hmm, Five minutes and then yeah. get right into the evening. Really <laughs> Good night. I know. Everybody, Everybody, you can